Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, New Life. We are so glad to have you here with us this morning. Why don't we rise to our feet as we get ready to worship God together.
that you're here with us. I know there's a bunch of other places you could be, probably more comfier beds, maybe comfier seats, but we're honored that you're here. Our main prayer for you this morning is that you would have an encounter with the living God, uh, because with, with that one experience with him can change just about everything. Uh, our next prayer for you is that you would get connected with someone if you're new, um, or maybe visiting us for the second or third time. And one of the best ways you can do that is there's some connection cards on the seats in front and behind you that you can fill out. You can also scan this QR code, um, and that's basically the best way for you to say hello to us, for us to say hi to you, and get to know you better. 
Yeah, and so also at, 10, at the 1045 service today, we have our Discovery. And so Discovery is a really great opportunity to learn about the values here at New Life and our vision. And we can also learn how God designed you, which is super important. So we have a really amazing team here called the Dream Team, which is our group of volunteers. And they're called the Dream Team because they help us fulfill the dream of bringing people to know God. And so when you walked in this morning and there were some really friendly people that greeted you, that's because God has given them that gift. And the people that made your coffee this morning were part of the hospitality team. Even the people that you dropped your kids off to this morning, yeah, the people yeah, who have been gifted te as to teaching children. And I love singing, and so I love that I can be a part of this worship team with these amazing people. And so there's a space for everyone, so we really want you to get plugged into Discovery and see how you can be um, putting your skills to use here in the house of the Lord. So you can scan that same QR code to sign up for Discovery. Absolutely. Now one last thing before we get into the message, we're going to enter into another time of worship through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Um, and what I want to let you know is because of your faithfulness to the tithe, New Life Church has been able to move into this facility for almost a year now, and the main thing that that's done for us is expanded our reach for the lost. And what I want to let you know is last week we had our Easter services, and in Easter alone we had 21 salvations of people that dedicated their life, yeah, people that dedicated their life to Christ or rededicated their life to following Jesus. So that is a big, big reason for praise. Um, now, one last thing, if you see extra cash in the buckets as we begin the tithe and you have a financial need this morning, we want to let you know that it is okay to take some cash out of that bucket. We're serious about that if you have a need. So please take that in consideration. Now, I want to pray a blessing over the tithers this morning. If you could grab the method in which you give, whether that's recurring giving with your phone or cash or a check, and just hold it out, I want to just pray a blessing over us this morning. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for coming alongside those that stepped out in faith this morning. I know as, as humans and being on this earth, it's sometimes uncomfortable to do this because we step out in faith not knowing when we're going to reap the blessing of it. But God, I thank you that you meet us where we are and you give us your sense of peace and comfort during this time that, we, that, that when we trust you, you stand next to us and you guide us in the right direction. So God, I pray a special blessing over the givers this morning and that we can just have a powerful encounter with the Holy Spirit. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Awesome. So excited to have you guys in the house. Um, if you are wondering who is this person, I'm obviously not Pastor Dan. So my name is Aaliyah Rowland. I'm our kids director here at New Life Church. Um, I absolutely love my job. It's one of the best things that I get to do. Um, I have a shirt that says teaching kids about Jesus is the best job ever. And I truly believe that and truly feel that. Um, if you have kids in kids ministry, you know that they're being taken care of so well by our amazing uh, kids team members. And if you don't have your kids in kids ministry yet, I encourage you to try it out because it's a really cool place to be for the kids. Before we get started with today's message, I wanted to just give a couple shout outs to a couple people. Um, we have a lot of people who are traveling, um, coming back from spring break. So can we give everyone who's watching online a big hand this morning? We're praying that you're traveling safe, and we're excited to see you in the house next week. Um, I also am a really big fan of honoring people, and I want to just take a second to honor our amazing pastors, Dan and Kelsey, as they are traveling back from spring break. 
Um, they lead our church and our congregation so well, have made such an impact in my life, and I know in so many of your guys' lives. So can we give them a hand as well, too? All right, so today I'm so excited to be up here because I am actually introing our uh, brand new sermon series about the Holy Spirit. Um, it's going to be a four-week series. It's really awesome. I'm super excited about it. Um, and when I was preparing for the message, I was, you know, I'm not really a big reader, but I try to be. I feel like that's a grown-up thing to do, so I'm trying. <laughs> so if you have any good book suggestions, maybe put them my way after service. Um, but I was looking for some different books about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, there was like the typical, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you, who is the Holy Spirit. But two of them actually really stood out to me. One of them was called Forgotten God, and the other one was called The God I Never Knew. And I thought, huh, I wonder why is that? And I realized the church in general, we don't talk about the Holy Spirit enough. We don't know about him enough. I feel like some people probably think, ugh, the Holy Spirit, I, I don't know about that. And it's a topic that's caused a lot of division in different areas of Christianity. And I wanted to give you guys a disclaimer because maybe you're sitting here today and you're like, ooh, the Holy Spirit, is that the Holy Ghost that they talk about sometimes? I don't know about that. Kind of seems weird. I want to give you guys a disclaimer that the God that we serve is not a God of disorder, weirdness, or darkness. So we can rest assured that the Holy Spirit isn't any of that. In John 10.10, 10, it says that the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and that I have come, this is Jesus speaking, that, I may, that they may have life, that we may have life, and live it to the full. The thief in this situation is Satan. So I thought, of course, Satan would twist the good gift that the Holy Spirit is. He'd twist this good gift from God, so that way we kind of feel a little hesitant, maybe a little not sure about it, so we wouldn't live in the full life that God has for us with the Holy Spirit. So I want you to lean in today. If you're maybe that person who's, oh, I'm not really sure about it, lean in today. Get to know who the Holy Spirit is throughout today and the next couple of weeks, and I can promise you, you'll see him as a gift. Um, growing up, I went to a church. We talked about the Holy Spirit all the time. <laughs> it was very common. In every service, we talked about it. Um, so I'm very comfortable knowing who the Holy Spirit is, but I've realized that I more so knew a lot of the gifts of the Holy Spirit rather than knowing who the Holy Spirit is as a person. And so today I want to talk to you guys today about who the Holy Spirit is. As we go throughout this series, you'll learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but I want, you to help, I want to help you learn who the Holy Spirit is. That way when we talk about the gifts, you know who the gifts come from. So if you're taking notes today, which we say that note takers are world changers, yeah, good job. <laughs> um, the title of today's message is Who is the Holy Spirit? And I encourage you to dig deeper throughout this four weeks of uh, messages. I'm married to my awesome husband, Brody, who's sitting over here. Um, we've been married, it'll be three years in July, and I would say I know my husband pretty well. I'm not an expert because... I'm still, like, newly married. Some of you who've been married for much longer, you're probably an expert on your spouse. But I have, <laughs> maybe not, <laughs> but I would say I know Brody better than everyone in this room right now because I put in the time, I put in the effort, and I put in years of time talking with him and listening to him to get to know who he is as a person. And I encourage you as we go through this series on the Holy Spirit to do that with the Holy Spirit as well. If I only talked to Brody and heard about Brody and who he was for one hour for four weeks, I wouldn't know him very well. So I encourage you throughout this, dive into the Holy Spirit. Ask God to reveal to you even further who the Holy Spirit is. The book of Acts talks all about the Holy Spirit. So that's a great one to read too. So I can give you guys three points today on who the Holy Spirit is on that surface level, but dive in. So point number one is the Holy Spirit is God. Pretty self-explanatory, right, guys? <laughs> so I wanted to give you guys a little example because I think sometimes the Trinity can be a little bit confusing because it's three parts, but we serve one God. So if you um, think back to your old, maybe second grade elementary, I used to be a teacher back in the day. So we're going to talk a little bit about science for a section. So I hope you guys are prepared for that. So we have three different parts up here. 
We have liquid water. We have some ice that's good. Ice, steam, and water. But we know at the very core of it, they're all what? Water. They're all H2O. They're all the same. They all have the same molecular makeup, but they have different purposes. They have different jobs and different roles and different forms that they take. The steamer probably won't heat up in time, but you guys get the point. <laughs> so we know that even though we serve one God, there's three different parts. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I love um, when Jesus is baptized, we get to see all three of the Trinity in one passage of Scripture. So in John um, 3, 16 and 17, it says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending it like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. Um, with him I am well pleased. And so I love this scripture because we see all three so clearly. We see Jesus because he's standing in the water waiting to get baptized. We see God the Holy Spirit who is ascending on Jesus like a dove. He's not a dove, but he's ascending on Jesus like a dove. And we hear the voice of the Father saying, this is my son whom I love and with him I am well pleased. So we see all three in one part of scripture. If you've ever been baptized at New Life, and if you haven't and you want to, baptisms are actually coming up at the very end of this month, so you can sign up on the app, just a little plug. Um, but if you've ever been baptized, we baptize people with all the Trinity. We actually quote this verse from Matthew, and it says, um, this is Jesus' command to us, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we do this because, again, we serve a God with three different parts, but it's all one. What I love about the Trinity, too, and what I love about the Holy Spirit's role in the Trinity is that the Holy Spirit is actually the only part of the Trinity that is here on earth currently. He's dwelling in the hearts of believers. Um, so many times in my walk of Christianity, I've thought to myself, man, it'd be really cool if I could, like, go see Jesus and, like, go hear from him and go talk to him. And I thought about it. If, I, if Jesus was here on earth still, and if I wanted to go talk to him, he lives in Israel. So I'd have to take a plane ride from here to, like, let's say Tel Aviv in Israel. Then I'd have to drive from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. We'll say he's there. That's like an hour and a half drive. And then when you get to Jerusalem, we know that Jesus attracts a ton of people like crowds of maybe like 5,000, 3,000, just to name a few. So then you'd have to get there. You'd have to waddle your way through the crowd to finally get to Jesus in order to have that conversation with him. And what I think is cool is, yes, of course, I would love to have that conversation with Jesus. But that same power that's in Jesus is right here in my heart. And it's in the heart of believers, too. Um, we know that the Holy Spirit's here. But I want to talk just for a second on where the other two parts of the Trinity are too, because I think that's important to know. And we know where the other parts are. We know that God is seated on the throne, and we know that Jesus is seated at the right hand next to God. And we know that because in 1 Peter 3, 21 and verse 22, it says, It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at God's right hand. So we know he's right there. And then the Holy Spirit is living in our hearts, and he came during Pentecost, which was awesome. That whole video we watched, the bumper, that talked all about Pentecost, it was pretty sweet. So, um, so now that we know that the Holy Spirit is God, we now need to know that he's actually a person too. Not like a person like you and I, but he's a person with qualities like us. So point number two, if you're taking notes, is the Holy Spirit is a person. When I was preparing for this message, um, I came across a quote that I actually really liked, and I wanted to read it to you guys. It's from John Brevere. If you have heard of him before, maybe haven't heard of him, he's this really amazing pastor. I think he's, like, in the South, maybe? Yeah, he's awesome. Really good. Our, actually, our men's life group is doing a study by John Brevere, so very great. And it says that we get it wrong when we try to study the works of the Holy Spirit without knowing him as a person. The Holy Spirit is not an it or a spirit of... When I say like a spirit of, it's not like a spirit of like, 
democracy, generosity, spirit of Christmas. It's not like that. But he's a person full of power and authority, but also tender and loving. And if we just think the first part, that he's just an it or a spirit of, we actually, actually devalue him as God. He has so much power, so much authority, yet he's tender and loving towards his people. He also has a couple qualities that are similar to us, too, that we can find scriptures for. He has a mind, he has emotions, and he has a will. So we know that he has a mind because in Romans 8, 27, it says, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. We know that he has a mind. It literally says he has a mind. He thinks, and his thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. We know that he has emotions because in Ephesians 4.30, it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. To grieve means to upset. Um, I don't know about y'all, but you might sometimes have a little bit of like what we call righteous anger. You might feel like your heart gets angry about something that isn't right in God's eyes. Anyone ever had that before? Yeah? Yep, that's the Holy Spirit. And we know that the Holy Spirit also has a will, because in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, it says, All of these are the work of the one and the same Spirit. He distributes to each of them just as he determines. So he does things. He moves things. He leads and he guides us in the ways of God. What I love about the Holy Spirit, too, is not only does he have the different qualities and attributes as a person does with the mind, will, and emotions, he also is some of the things that we describe people as, too. Some of the names of the Holy Spirit is that he's our comforter. When you're in times of sadness, he's there to comfort you, there to um, speak to you. He's also our friend who we can develop a closer relationship with, and he wants to be your closest friend. Um, When I first got married a couple years ago, um, it was supposed to be like the best time of my life. You know, you get married and you're like, oh my gosh, my whole life, I've been waiting all this time to be married, and it's going to be perfect and wonderful and amazing. (laughs) And like it is, (laughs) but for me... And my marriage was great in the beginning. But for me, I actually went through a period of time where I was super anxious and super depressed, which if you know me, that's not typical of me. Um, I will never forget there was one time where my entire family had come up from Waterville, so like a half hour drive, and we were going to go to Gold Meadow Farms. And I was super excited. I've been actually like planning for this for months. And the day finally came, and I'm sitting in my bed crying because I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't feel like getting up and going and spending time with my family because I was just in such a dark um, place that I just felt so stuck. Anyone ever been in that place before? Yeah. Um, And I remember my husband, because this went on for a couple weeks, my husband would come home from like worship practice or from work and he'd say, because all the lights would be off, I'd be in my bed. Um, And he'd be like, it just feels like I'm walking into a house with like a cloud of darkness. And that's just what it felt like at the time. Um, And there was a a time at Matawan when we used to be there that we had our large rally. So we had all the Dream Team members come together. So we're in this large rally. I'm smiling. I was on the first impressions team at the time. So I'm supposed to be like the smiley person at the church. And I just felt so sad. Didn't want to be here, which is not me but it just was a hard, hard season. I left the rally because I just was very much in my emotions, and I went into the auditorium and just sat in there, um, and I had a moment where I just was like, God, I just feel really alone. No one knows what I'm going through. Maybe some people can see it, but they don't see it fully. And I remember crying out to God of just feeling like, God, I want this to end. I just feel so alone. And all of a sudden, I look over, and someone's walking into the auditorium who had no idea of what was going on. But they knew that something was telling them to go into the auditorium to find me and to pray with me. And they prayed with me. We talked and we talked about um, just what I was going through and everything. Um, And that, to me, was such a clear time of when the Holy Spirit was that friend. He prompted someone to come find me to pray over me exactly what I needed to hear in that moment. So the Holy Spirit wants to be your closest friend. 
Point number three, ooh, three. <laughs> Point number three is the Holy Spirit is a gift. What I love is I love the thought of when Jesus is ascending into heaven. He's going up there. He's probably excited to go back with the Father. But I can only imagine the smile on his face knowing that shortly after at Pentecost that another gift would be coming down for people, um, which would be the Holy Spirit. Something cool to know is that Jesus actually didn't do a miracle until after the Holy Spirit descended on him while getting baptized, which is when he turned water into wine. Jesus learned, grew, and was empowered by the Holy Spirit. He knew him super well because he was part of him. Some of the names of the Holy Spirit, as I've mentioned, the Helper, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of God, the Counselor, the Intercessor, which means to pray over or on behalf of someone else, the Guide, which is someone who leads us in the ways of God. There's a ton of names of God. If you want to really dive into more of the names of God, they're all over in the New Testament, like I said, in Acts, um, and further in the New Testament. You can sometimes see them in the Old Testament, too. But I want to really point out one of them that is one of my personal favorites, and it's the advocate, someone who speaks on our behalf. Um, If you have kids who are in youth group, Um, We are taking another trip to Axis, which is awesome. Highly recommend. Um, I've been twice. And the first time I went to Axis, one of the speakers, it was the very last night, and we were talking about the Holy Spirit. He's a very, very cool um, pastor out in Las Vegas, and he did a demonstration about who the Holy Spirit is as the advocate. So I want to show you guys what that is, um, because I think it's just such a clear picture of what that looks like. So I need my handy partner in crime to come on up here. (laughs) All right, and in this scenario, Brody is actually going to be the Holy Spirit in this scenario, and I'm going to be just the regular person. So I want you to imagine, so uh, an advocate, let's talk about that for a second, an advocate. When I think of an advocate, somebody who speaks on the behalf of someone, I normally think of like a courtroom, because we know we have like different advocates who plead the case of people. So you can think of like maybe a lawyer, advocate, that sort of thing. So I want you guys to imagine with me, we're in a courtroom, okay? We're in a courtroom. If you're anything like me, I love court shows, <laughs> so probably it's pretty clear to imagine it. But I want you to imagine our courtroom, and before you, you see a judge on the throne. That's God. So that's your judge. To your side, on your left, you have your accuser, which is Satan, speaking lies to the judge. Then you're here standing here before the judge with your accuser. The Holy Spirit's role as your advocate is to come alongside you at your right side and to lock arms with you and to be with you during that. The Holy Spirit is here also to speak on your behalf to the judge. So when the accuser is saying things that are not true, the Holy Spirit can step up and say, no, no, hang on, judge, that's not true. Or wait, wait, wait. That's not it. Or another role that the Holy Spirit has in this scenario is the Holy Spirit can also whisper things for you to say, to speak for yourself too. I love this because it's such a clear sign of who the Holy Spirit wants to be in your life. He wants to be somebody who does life side by side with you. What I love about this too is that, I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely been at times in my life where I've been in a scenario where I feel like I just, so many lies So many different things are coming at me. And I have literally had to do this. To lean on the Holy Spirit. To look at them and say, can you speak on my behalf? Can you help me? And the Holy Spirit always says yes. And I love that about the Holy Spirit because that's such a clear picture of who he is in our lives. He's that helper. He's that advocate. He's the one who goes before us. And he'll be with us in those hard times. So, thank you. I want to dive a little bit more into the word um, advocate. Um, We see the word advocate come um, a couple different times in scripture. But the advocate, the helper, the intercessor, it actually is all from a Greek word. How many of you all ever watched my big fat Greek wedding before? 
Anyone? I so badly wanted to come out here and be like, the Greek word, but I was like, well, we don't need to. <laughs> I did it anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> the Greek word for intercessor is actually a word called parakletos. Do you guys want to repeat it? Parakletos? Parakletos. And we see the word parakletos come into scripture a couple different times, but one that I want to point out is actually in John 14, 16. And it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. We can take that word advocate, pop in the word parakletos, and it's the same thing. I want to break down the word parakletos for you guys too. So we have two different parts of the word. We have para, which means very close, side by side. Maybe some of you in this room are paraprofessionals at a school. You work side by side with a student. Maybe some of you just know what a paraprofessional is or paralegal. Those kind of people work side by side. Then we have the word kletos, which is the second part of the word, which means to beckon or to call and to call permanently. So when we put that together, we can rest assured knowing that the Holy Spirit is called to walk alongside us permanently to be our advocator, to help us, and to guide us in our walk with God. I, When I was in that time of um, just that kind of depression and feeling just very anxious and not really myself, it went on for quite a while. You know, I had people pray for me, but I, it was something I had to battle a lot, and it was hard. It taught me a lot of dependence on God because I can't do it on my own. Um, but I'll never forget, there was one day, um, I was working a job that was a lot, it was, it was a great job, it was a little bit harder than I expected, it was during COVID, so you can imagine, during COVID, everything was a lot harder, <laughs> um, and it was just, it was hard, it was a season where I was like, okay, God, I know you have something next for me, but I don't know what it is quite yet, and I remember I got an opportunity to, um, apply for a new job and I was super excited. I was like, oh yes, this is my out. <laughs> this is my time that I get to try something new. Maybe this is what God had for me all along. And I was really excited and I was really hopeful that this was it. And I remember I interviewed, it went great. Um, and I remember I got a text while I was at uh, my job and I got a text that it wasn't the right time. And I remember I was so crushed. I felt so, the word that I think of when I, the phrase that I thought of when I was in that time was I felt just very devoid of hope. I felt like everything was just like crumbling down. I'm sure that some of you guys have been in that place before. I remember I literally, my kids were out at recess because I was teaching at the time. And I remember I laid down on my classroom rug and I just cried. And I'm like, all right, my kids are coming back in in like 10 minutes. God, I need you to help me get up off of this floor because... I can't be laying on the ground when my kids come in. And I remember the Holy Spirit so clearly saying to me, I have this. I've got this. Trust me. I'm here to walk alongside you. And I'm so glad that I had that time. Even though it was a no in the moment, I'm so glad I had that time because I was able to grow so much more in my relationship with God. I was able to grow so much more in my dependence on God and my and my following of the Holy Spirit. So it was so much more worth it to me to have that than to get the answer right away. So as we start to wrap things up, I want to re remind you guys of the three points. Like the Holy Spirit is God. He's a person and he's a gift. And like I said, Jesus knew this before he left this earth. When he's going up into heaven, he knew that something was coming soon that was going to be a gift to us. A little trick of the trade that I like to do for um, myself when I'm reading the Bible is sometimes if I'm not understanding or if I want further understanding, I like to read the same passage but in two different translations. So I want to do that for us today. I want to start um, with the NIV, which is just the typical one that I read most of the time, and then I want to move to the Amplified version. So if you go to John 16, 7, in the NIV, it says, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Great verse. Jesus knew the gift that was coming. He was excited for the disciples and for us as believers to have this gift. But let's read it in the Amplified Version too. 
But I tell you the truth, it is for your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, strengthener, and standby. We see so many different names of who this Holy Spirit is. We see so much more that he's more than just a helper. He's all of those things as well. Will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him the Holy Spirit. all of those qualities yet he wants to be in close relationship with you and we know this because we can read all about it in the bible i love in the book of acts when after pentecost after the holy spirit came down the disciples depended on the holy spirit there's so many different scriptures that will say things like the disciples listened to the spirit the disciples were sent by the spirit They were guided by the Spirit. They were warned by the Spirit. They were led by the Spirit. There are so many different places in the scripture that we can see the dependence on the Holy Spirit. And we can see the Holy Spirit working and moving. Sometimes I think, at least for me, I think that we can read scriptures and stuff like that. And we're like, that's great for the disciples. But like, does that actually happen anymore today? And I thought of just a couple of like the modern examples of when you can feel the Holy Spirit. How many of you guys have ever been in your car driving and all of a sudden you hear a song come on the radio and you're like, that song was for me. Anyone ever feel that? Yeah. Yep. How many of you guys have ever been in a sermon series or in a sermon and you feel like the pastor is speaking directly to you, but you have no, they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea what happened on the way to church this morning. They have no idea what happened earlier this week. That's the Holy Spirit. Maybe you have gotten a text from someone randomly right exactly when you needed it. That happened to me today. Um, That's the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've texted somebody and they've responded back, I really needed to hear this. That's the Holy Spirit. Maybe you prayed for someone on the spot without knowing a single thing of what's going on in their life, but you knew something in you was saying, go pray for that person. That's the Holy Spirit. Maybe you were speaking to someone and it It felt like something you had to say, so you said it. You felt like God was telling you to say it. You said it, and maybe you don't remember everything you said, but they remember every word. That's the Holy Spirit. Anybody ever cry in worship? I do all the time. (laughs) That's the Holy Spirit. There are so many different times that the Holy Spirit is working or moving, or you can feel the Holy Spirit in your life. He's not just someone who is in the Old Test, the New Testament with the disciples. He's someone who's living here today with us. In my life, I was thinking, um, I was thinking about just some personal examples in my own life where I felt the Holy Spirit. Um, and for me, a couple different times that really stood out um, was there was one time my husband and I we were brand new, brand new to Kalamazoo. We're I like to say we're country mice. We're from Waterville, so it's a really small town. <laughs> There's like one stoplight. Um, So we came to Kalamazoo and we're walking through um, just a bunch of different like tables of different things you can do at Western. And I saw this really cute blonde couple is what I say. And I was like, they're starting a church. I'm looking for a church. I don't know, maybe it's not it. And then I felt something in my heart say, this is your church. This is your church. So I grabbed Brody and we went, we talked with them. It was Dan and Kelsey, spoiler alert, here we are today. But they, the church hadn't even been planted yet, but I knew this was gonna be the church for us. Another time that I felt the Holy Spirit was I, um, before coming into being in ministry, I worked as a teacher. I quit a full-time job to come into ministry knowing that there's gonna be different challenges in it. I also sometimes, I, I stepped into a job of teaching kids about Jesus, which is the best job in the world, but y'all, it's weighty. (laughs) It's weighty. (laughs) Um, And sometimes I don't feel equipped for it, but I know that God equips me for it, and I know I'm here for a reason. And so the Holy Spirit has just moved in so many different times in my life. But I wanted to share with you guys, I, when I was preparing for this, I actually texted my mom because I was like, I can't remember any of the things that the Holy Spirit has done in my life, and I've known him for a long time. 
but I was having a hard time remembering. And so my mom texted me back a prayer and prayed over it. And I thought, man, how many times in our lives do we forget sometimes too? How many times do we think the Holy Spirit's not speaking to me? What am I doing wrong? But he's been there all along. He's there, he wants to talk to you. So my prayer for you today is that you're reminded of how the Holy Spirit has moved in your life, like how my mom prayed for me. My prayer is that you remember him, you remember and you use the authority that lives inside of you. Some of you guys might be here today or joining us online, and this is your first time you've ever come here. I'm so glad you're here this morning. It's a great day. You might be thinking, man, that sounds really cool. I would love to have someone who's like a friend who's there with me every day. Um, And you can receive that same gift this morning. Some of you might be in this room, and maybe you came from the background where you're like, I don't know about the Holy Spirit. That kind of just seems a little weird. I'm not sure. But maybe today you're like, I want that. I want that. I want to go from knowing 33% of the Godhead, knowing God the Father, or 66% of the Godhead, knowing God the Father and the Son. And I want to know the whole 100%, all three. That might be you today. All you have to do is you have to believe and you have to receive. Some of you might be in this room too, and you're feeling, for me, I always feel like it's kind of stirring in my heart. Something's pulling up my heartstrings. Pastor Dan says, you feel like something's messing with you. That, my friends, is the Holy Spirit. (laughs) He's knocking at the door of your heart. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are knocking at the door of your heart. And they're asking you to remove any obstacles, any barriers, and to let them in. So let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for each and every person that is in this room or who's watching online. God, I thank you for um, just all the good gifts that you've given us. God, I thank you for the gift of your son we talked about last week with Easter. I thank you that he died on the cross so that way we may have life. God, I pray, Lord, for any person in this room who maybe doesn't know Jesus, doesn't know you yet, that God, I pray, Lord, that they would make that decision in their hearts today that they want to know you. And I ask that if that's you today, I'm not gonna make you come up to the front. I'm not gonna make you do anything crazy. But when I say, I do ask that you take a step of faith and you raise your hand. So if that's you today and you feel like, I wanna know this God, the God that has three different parts. I wanna know him. I wanna have a relationship with him. If that's you today, will you raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for? Thank you. God sees you. God sees your hearts. If that's you today, from your heart to God's ears, I want you to repeat this prayer. God, I thank you so much for who you are. I thank you that you love me so much. I thank you that you love me so much that you gave your only son to die in my place so that I could live with you forever. God, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I admit that there have been so many times in my life that I've sinned and I'm sorry. And God, I commit to following you and to following the the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And if you're here today and you maybe have never asked the Holy Spirit to come reside in your life and to lead you and guide you, I ask that today is a great day to do that too. If that's you today from your heart to God's ears, you can repeat after me, Holy Spirit, I invite you to live in my life. I invite you to lead me, to guide me, to warn me, to correct me, and to speak to me. I want to know you more, and I commit to following what you have for my life. And I thank you for the gift that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just made that decision to follow Christ today, welcome home. Your next step is baptisms, and so we'll be having baptisms on April 28th, so you can register for that in the NLC app. And then also we're going to be having our step two of discovery next week, so you can register for that in the app as well. Now let's rise and get ready to worship one more time. I'm no longer a slave to fear, and I am a child. God, I'm no longer a slave to fear, and I am a 
child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of delight.
praise this morning. Come on. Thank you guys so much for being here with us this morning. Like we said, Discovery is next service. If you want to be a part of that, we also have step two next week. So y'all have a great day. We'll see you later.